Hey everyone, it's Hugh Sweeney here and I'm out on this fabulous day today to bring you a review of the Moza Slypod Pro. So what I'm doing now is I'm driving to a new location today to just get it out of the bag and try it out and do some shots with it and see how it works as a filmmaking tool. So it looks like I've arrived at my destination. This lake on the right here is called Loch Bunny. Now hopefully the sun will come out again as it just has there because it's been getting a little bit duller. And this area looks so much better when it's sunny. What I love about lakes is the water doesn't move, the tide doesn't go in and out. It's just right here, right at the edge. I can sit here and just know that the water is gonna stay right here. Now, this is really cool because I can drop the gear and sit right here in this lovely dugout channel here that probably took, you know, 200,000 years to form. And today, I'm just using it as a seat. Oh, how comfortable is that? Right, so here's my first impressions of the Moza Slypod Pro. Now, as you can see, I've already dirtied up the bag a little bit there. Now, comparing to the previous Slypod, the bag is sort of a lighter weight affair. Now, that is not necessarily a bad thing because the previous case was a little bit overkill with the first Slypod. So I'm not minding the bag. Inside the bag, there's these sort of strap things that hold down the actual, um, Slypod in the bag. I don't know if you'd want them. I mean if it's going in the bag, it's going in the bag I don't, I don't think it's going to move about too much. So first impressions big changes in comparison to the last Slypod big changes um, In the hand. I mean this thing it, it, it's crazy. I mean look at that. That is the base Okay, it's a sort of a compact tripod system there. I'll talk about that in a minute So it's a little bit heavier. I think they have redone the top here as well and fitted what looks like an Arca Swiss type fixing on the front here. It's just, I can feel it here, it's buttery smooth. It's well greased up. Multiple fixtures here to, to really get a, a good fixing with the tripod plate. Now if you are using tripods with these guys, you're going to want to use a really good quality tripod. There's a second plate down here so you can actually move where you're putting the tripod. It depends on what way you're going to shoot. This could be ideal if you were doing a long drop down shot or something like that. So on the bottom here, you have this sort of really nice quality stand thing. It's like a mini tripod itself. Now I'm going to say one thing, okay? When you're using gear, new gear like this, tripods like this, that you may not be familiar with, you're going to really risk dropping your camera, okay? Even though this is made really well and it's great quality, you could drop your camera. So I would say don't get in the habit of putting your camera on this system and leaving it. And honestly, I'm not actually going to really use this in this scenario because I don't want to use the Slypod as an actual monopod. So we can remove this and this is going to come off. Now again, we have a thread coming out the bottom of the Slypod there. And I'm kind of, I've mixed feelings about that because if it was threaded in the way, you could mount your own fixing on there. So that is basically it. We're going to switch it on. Again, you just hold a little silver button here for a couple of seconds. The light is very faded. <laughs> to check to see if it's on or not, I literally have to go like that. Okay, I can see it's on. Green light for on. On the bottom you have a USB-C connection here and you have another communications sort of uh, connection there as well. A nice big thick rubber grip. One thing they really should have done, they should have put more emphasis on the plus and minus button here on the bottom. With devices like this, I've noticed that there's too much emphasis on the app. And us filmmakers don't want to be taking out our mobile phone and going through an app and trying to connect up your phone to this device or other devices. You want to take it out of the bag and have as many options ready available to you as possible. Instead of having to press plus or minus a few times to adjust the speed, why not just have like one, two and three, slow, medium and full speed fast. And that way at least you've got it right in front of you and you're not sort of trying to gauge what speed it's going at. So. Big criticism on not changing the speed there, but I will say that the device itself is much better. So let's just see what it's like. Okay, here we go. 
Okay. Now, obviously, the first thing you're going to notice is this massive improvements in extension. I mean, look at that. That is two foot of extension. And that's a long slide. Trust me, it's a very long slide. So let's get a plate on there and see what it's like. Do my best to level the horizon, even though the camera's upside down. Okay, things are getting a lot sunnier now. Oh, shit. So as I have a cup of tea here, I'd like to reflect on my thoughts on the Moses Slypod. After using the Slypod Pro, I've noticed that like any bit of camera gear, it has its pros and its cons. The speed of the slider is a major improvement on the previous one, which looking back now is painfully slow. The Slypod Pro will slide 70 millimeters, which is almost three inches in a second. It's not bad, but it's not overly fast either. And if you're shooting a lot of high frame rate B-roll that you're gonna slow down and post, then you'll find yourself using it at top speed pretty much all the time. I really like the versatility of the Slypod Pro as it can do a multitude of interesting slides. It's particularly good at vertical jib style slides and low POV drop slides, which will be next to impossible to do with other slider systems. So what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm gonna try and do like a very tall kind of crane shot um, perhaps come down along the tree here so what I'll do first is I'll get the angle of the camera right now I'm gonna just calculate what it's gonna be for now and I'm gonna make bloody sure that everything is good and tight because I've got my R5 on there It's also really good at projecting the camera through gaps and close to objects. I like the carbon fibre and satin alloy construction, it just feels really nice in the hand. The Arca Swiss head is great as well and you can set the camera angle very quickly. Probably one of the best features on the Slypod Pro is the actual head here. It's incredibly intuitive and very easy just to move it about. So all you gotta do is just turn a few knobs, lock it up and do that. And even if you want to turn the camera that way and that way, it'll just do it with this one knob. So that one knob will control it to the left, to the right and down. So you can really mess with a lot of angles there. And then you can take the knob on the left and turn it that way. So it's just really nicely done and very easy to use. I perilously positioned my camera millimeters from water with this slider. And that's not something I do with the cheap device. The two tripod mounting points, both Arca Swiss, are a nice touch too, as is the extendable tripod base, which will let you adjust the angle of the slider, but I don't see myself using that tripod a whole lot. So now it's time to mention a few negatives of the slider. Firstly, it's quite noisy. In fact, it's a bit too noisy for capturing ambient audio, 
and therefore it's not a slider you could use for interviews. The lack of hardware control is another thing that bugs me. Just two small discrete buttons right at the bottom end of the slider is all you have to control it. See the button now is down at the side here. This is not good ergonomics. Why isn't it just here? I mean that would be so much easier to use there. And it can be awkward to get the right speed you want, unless you use the app on your phone. And I found myself pulling out my hair trying to figure out whether the slider was in cycle mode or not. And there was a lot of instances where I thought it was in cycle mode and it wasn't, and I had to go back and readjust it. With the Slypod Pro being twice the weight of the previous Slypod, I was surprised to see that its payload was a lot less. It can only do up to 2 kilograms on a horizontal slide. Now they are making a bracket available that can up the horizontal weight to about 3.5 kilograms. But for now the 2 kilogram limit is enough to cover most mirrorless cameras with standard type lenses. One thing I was a little disappointed with was the shake that I sometimes noticed with the Slypod Pro. Wind will cause it to vibrate a bit and even in cam settings there can be some disruption to the slider movement. Particularly when it reaches full extension, there is a notable shimmy there that will affect the footage. I found the worst shake to be on vertical moves, but I will cut it some slack as it is down to the nature of the mechanics for it to move about a little bit. Even with the best build quality, you just cannot expect it to be perfectly steady always. When I first unboxed the Slypod Pro and started charging it, I actually thought my charger was broken because it was taking so long to charge. It's a slow device to charge and it takes 4 hours. But the good news is, the battery does last quite a long time. It should get you through a day's shooting. Other than controlling the Slypod via the plus or minus button on the bottom of the slider, you can of course use the app. For things like time lapses where you need to set the duration of the slide, the app is essential. I shot one or two quick time lapses and it's fairly straightforward with the app. Just bang in the time you want and press go. Simple as that. I use the intervalometer on the camera and just let it run independently of the slider. But if you want, you can connect the camera to the Slypod with one of the many cables provided and have the Slypod take the photo at set intervals in which the slider will stop for the duration of the shutter. So who is the Slypod Pro for and should you get one? Well if you're looking to shoot interviews or anything that requires ambient audio, forget about it, it's too loud. But if you're a solo filmmaker interested in capturing nice b-roll, particularly if you're alone and you want shots of yourself without using a locked off tripod shot every time, then the Slypod Pro is an absolute godsend. And it's also brilliant if you're into creative time lapses. Moses sent me this slider for free. Well, not really free considering the amount of work I've put into this review. One thing I will say is that I don't review anything that I feel I won't use myself as a filmmaker. Moza also didn't request that I show them the video first, so I'm just putting this video out there and this is my honest review of this slider. So the bottom line is, when it comes to the Slypod Pro, there's a lot of stuff I would like to change on it. But having said that, it's still a fantastic product and it's literally twice the slider that the previous version was. And considering that it's at the same price point, well, then it's a no-brainer. So as I finish up here, guys, with a cup of tea, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And I hope you enjoyed the content that I provided with the Moza Slypod Pro. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up for the video, and leave a comment below if you can, because those little things mean a lot to me. I might help with the success of the video. So until next time guys, it's over and out for me. Take care.